What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Your boy is back. This is Jay. I'm back in the house, and I'm back for you 100%. Oh, my God. So good to be back. It has been a great summer. Okay, guys, so before we get started, I would just like to let you know that today's show is sponsored by Warnology.com. That's www.warnology.com. Your look, your life, your style. As a matter of fact, you see this hat? See this watch? Warnology.com. You better get into it, baby. All right. So anyway, guys, so how's everybody? How has your summer been? Mine has been really, really busy. Lots to do. You know, I think I spoke with you guys uh, three months ago, and I was just telling you that I was working on some things and making some transitions. Well, all of those things are in full progress right now, and I'm very happy and excited about it. Lots of great things uh, that are going to be happening on this channel this year. All right, so guys, so um, one of the things that I did this summer, um, I went to see homegirl, hometown favorite, Jennifer Lewis, the Jennifer Lewis, you know, still big in Kenlock, that Jennifer Lewis. Uh, she had a one, uh, one, a one woman show here at Webster University. And oh my God, you guys, Jennifer Lewis is just amazing. I can't say enough wonderful things about her. She's, she's funny. She's smart. She sings. She dances. I mean, the woman can kick her leg all the way up to the ceiling and then bring it back down. Sister got some skills. But anyway, you know, but uh, yeah, she was here. She actually, uh, and also she's a number one um, book author. You know, her, her her book has been a number one for a long time. And um, she was actually selling the book and I actually got a copy. And my my copy is has been signed and everything. Um, I didn't get a chance to take a picture with Jennifer, but I did get a lot of up close shots of her and I had really good seats at her one woman show. Jennifer, guys, yeah, she's just amazing. I love her. We love her here in St. Louis, you know. Can't say enough great things about you. So she is my auntie in my head and also slash my big sister in my head. So, Jennifer, if you're watching this, and of course, why would you not watch my channel? I love you, Jennifer. I love you. I love you. All right. So uh, let's see what else happened uh, this summer. Um, uh, well, of course, uh, we all know that um, uh, rest in peace to... The Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Oh, man, I, you guys, I, I'll i be honest, I took that really, really hard. I, I just loved Aretha Franklin. Uh, I mean, who didn't love Aretha Franklin? Uh, her music was such a great part of the soundtrack to my life. I, man, I remember being a kid listening to Aretha Franklin for the first time. Um, my mother would always play the song Ain't No Way Now. I must tell you, <laughs> my mother played that song a lot. And because she would always play this song when she was mad at my father, because God rest my father's soul. My, my father was a, you know, he, he, you know, he, he, he loved the ladies. And, um, sometimes my dad would, you know, um, get a little crazy out there in those streets and he would mess up. I'm just being real y'all, you know? Trying for some transparency here, so work with me. But, but anyway, but uh, yeah, so but whenever my daddy got crazy out in those streets, my mother would always play Ain't No Way by Aretha Franklin. And she would put it on repeat and turn it up sky high. Like my mom would play Ain't No Way all night long. All night long. I mean, I, I, I mean, just blasting it, you know, because... um. No, she was just sending a message to my dad. You know, I remember uh, also um, uh, what's that? What's that one song that I always loved by Aretha Franklin? Spanish Harlem, that song, and the song "Sparkle," uh, uh, "Pink Cadillac." Oh my God! I mean, like literally, she has like over six decades of music. I mean, the woman sang everything, not just soul. She wasn't just the queen of soul. I mean, she she sang opera. She sang jazz. She sang show tunes. You know, a, a lot of people, that's, I think, I, I really love the, that aspect of Aretha Franklin's career, the early, early years uh, before she had signed with Atlantic Records. She was actually, they really didn't know what to do with her because she was such a powerful, super powerful vocalist. I mean, Aretha Franklin is a, a, a 
is a force of nature, you know? And uh, they really didn't know what to do with her back then. And they would always, they would have her do like those show tunes and those, those jazzy ballads and stuff, you know? And she would, they would, I, I, I remember seeing old footage of her when she'd be in her little tight little dress and her little bouffant wig and singing jazz standards and just amazing, amazing woman. I, I, I loved Aretha Franklin on and off the stage. Of course, I didn't know her personally, but what I did know of her, I loved. I love the fact that she was a very, uh, she was a generous woman. I love the fact that she was a civil rights activist. You know, her, her music, um, played a great part in, in the civil rights movement. I, I loved all of that, all of that about her. I love the fact that how charitable she was and the fact that if she helped you, she told you to keep your mouth shut. You know, she didn't want her business out in the street. She just wanted to help people just because it was just the right thing to do. I just loved Aretha Franklin. And I really, I'll be honest, I did take it. I took it hard when she died because you know, Aretha reminded me her personality was so much like my mom, just kind of reserved and laid back. But if she had something to say, she'd tell you straight up, she didn't sugarcoat anything. And if your feelings got hurt, oh well, because obviously it was something that you needed to hear. And she always came from a place of love. So God rest you, um, uh, Queen of Soul. You know, I know I was away off of the, uh, my. I wasn't doing videos when she died. I almost wanted to jump on and and say something, but I said, no, I'll just wait until I come back fully for you guys. So that's my take on Aretha Franklin. And I just loved her so much. Um, now her funeral was another thing. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, 10 hours. That, that's a long, long, long time. So, you know, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. It was a good funeral. It was just really, really long. So, you know, shout out to that choir that sang in Aretha Franklin's funeral because, man, they were just magnificent. Magnificent. They really honestly were. They held that, they held those vocals down from beginning to end. Uh, I'm a singer, so I know how strenuous that can be, singing that long. And that choir was really amazing. Uh, you know, the choir was great. Uh, Richard Smallwood, uh, he's a legend uh, in the gospel world. He played um, for the choir. Oh my God. Uh, uh, Yolanda Adams, uh, uh, Fantasia Barino. I mean, the list just went on and on. Uh, the Clark sisters, any and everybody was at that funeral, you know, and uh, just the singers were just crazy, you know. Now, there were some moments in the funeral that uh, got some national attention. Uh, they talked about the, the, the pastor that, and that, guys, I'm just going to be honest. I know everyone has their own opinions about this pastor. Some people feel that he touched the girl around her waist and was maybe he, he had his hand on her the side of her boob some people feel that he did it on purpose and some people feel that he didn't i i saw the video i personally don't feel that he did it on purpose you know i i, I just think he's just had a, he's a very tall man and and uh uh adriana grande yeah that's her name and she's really little and, and petite and he had her in a position, and he was talking, and I re just really think he just inadvertently just grabbed her, and he, his hand was right there. I mean, as a guy, I can, I remember a couple times when I looked back at a photograph, and I was, I was in that position where I was touching a woman's breast in the photograph and not really realizing, because I'm just, you know, smiling, and we're posing for the picture, and I remember my friend and I, we both looked back, and we laughed at it, because like, she's like, oh my god, you touched me, I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't know, so, you know, but it was all good, but whatever, but I mean, that's just my opinion, I don't think that he, he meant any harm, and I, and also, I mean, he's a very well-known pastor in that community, I mean, and I'm not saying that the, I look, I don't know this man at all, but would he really run that risk on a world stage to touch a woman's side boob? I don't know. So you guys let me know in the comments. I mean, I really don't think that he meant any harm by it, but that's just my little opinion. And I know y'all going to disagree and that's fine. Just keep it respectful. All right. So um, also, I just got wind that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, they are deciding to move to Chicago. I said, hmm. Interesting. Kanye and Kim in Chicago. Now, of course, uh, you guys know that Kanye is, that's his hometown. He's from Chicago. So, I mean, I don't know why they're doing this or what that move is about. 
I'm assuming it has something to do with uh, his mom, Don DeWest. I know that they have some type of uh, uh, Don DeWest youth center there. And maybe he wants to, you know, just be a little closer to the action to make sure that um, things run correctly with his mom's youth center. Um, you know, and, and maybe he's just, you know, feeling that he really wants to get back home. You know, who knows? Maybe coming back home will actually get some sense into him, you know, because I'll be honest, I... I've always been a Kanye West fan, but I've not been one for a long time. Y'all, Kanye just makes it real hard to love him. <laughs> Especially as of late, you know, with all the craziness going on. You know, I think it's a, a, a combination of things with Kanye. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe some mental issues are going on there, you know, stress. And Kanye is just kind of all over the place. And also, I think it's a personality flaw as well. I think Kanye gets off on that attention. He's definitely a narcissist. He loves that, that attention, just like 45 does. So, you know, I think Kanye will say anything, the complete opposite of you, just to get that attention, just for you to have a sparring with him, to have a back and forth. Some people I know in my own personal life, they just get off on that. And I really do feel that Kanye is one of those people. But nevertheless, you know, Kanye and Kim, you know, y'all coming on, coming to Chicago. Uh, Chicago is about five or six hours outside of St. Louis, you know, depending on who's driving, I can drive it in five. But, um, yeah, so, um, you know, if, if it works, you know, and uh, you guys, are, if it works for you guys, hey, God bless you. All right, guys, so right now, I'm going to take a quick pause for the cause, and I will see you on the other side of this commercial break. Welcome to the world of Warnology. What defines you? Your look is all about what makes you uniquely you. Warnology is the science of gathering and recycling timeless and unique clothing that enhances your wardrobe. We encourage, no, we dare you to mix it up and be authentically you. Be different. Feel free to browse our collection of never worn to gently worn wear items that fit your style and budget. Let your fashion flag fly. That's the way we do it here at Warnology. Right now, head over to warnology.com and receive 15% off your first order when you sign up on our email list. Also, free shipping on all orders, $50. So that's www.warnology.com. Your look, your life, your style. All right, and we are back. Woo, okay, all right, so next, well, you guys like my MTV shirt? Vintage, huh? Warnology.com. I'm telling you, you better get into it. All right, so anyway, so, okay, guys, I want to talk about uh, the whole controversy between Cat Williams and Tiffany Haddish. I'm sure by now you guys have heard about it. But for those of you who haven't, let me just bring you up to speed real quick. Uh, Cat Williams was on the Greg and Wanda show, V103 in Atlanta, and he, which is a whole nother subject, and we'll get to that in a second. But basically, one of the things that Cat Williams uh, talked about was his dislike or disdain for the way he feels that Tiffany Haddish got to the top. Um, I don't know, guys. You know, it, it, it's like, first of all, God bless both of them. I like both of them. I like Cat Williams and I like Tiffany Haddish. You know, they both have very uh, uh, unique and different perspectives on comedy. You know, they both come from uh, rough backgrounds, you know. Um, I see both sides of this, guys, to be honest. When I heard Cat Williams make his statement, um, yes, it was a bit harsh. Some of it, I mean, but it wasn't like he was necessarily lying, you know? He was telling the truth. Now, some people are calling Cat a hater, you know? I, I, that word just gets on my nerves. I'm just, I just feel that the term hater is so overly, overly used, you know? I remember, look... <laughs> Last year, when I made this video about um, uh, 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 Sweetie Pies, you, you guys, you know, my Sweetie Pies video, you guys, I mean, if you go back and watch that video, I was so nice in that video. I was so nice. I was kind. 
I gave compliments, but I gave my opinion about my experience at Sweetie Pies. And I don't want to rehash that or whatever, but I'm just saying it's like, so, and I had people in my comment section calling me a hater. I even had a one a one person actually cuss me out and I took it out of my um uh out of my comment section because it's like, oh my god, are you kidding me? You guys are really doing this and I'm I'm one of, I feel I'm one of the nice ones. You know, but it's like but people, you know, they they just love using that word or whatever. So, you know, so I don't necessarily like to use that word. But anyway, um Cat Williams, he definitely brought up some good points. You know, I understand Cat Williams is a man of a particular age now. So he comes from a different perspective when it comes to comedy. And actually, a lot of those comedians really come from that same perspective that Cat Williams does. You know, Eddie Murphy, uh, uh, Wanda Sykes, uh, 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 Jerry Seinfeld, Joan Rivers, uh, Chris Rock. All of those comedians feel that you have to go through the ranks. When it comes to earning your for real stripes as a as a as a comedian, you know, even to this day, Chris Rock, in, it, just in an interview last year, he was talking about uh, introducing some new material, and Chris Rock, the Chris Rock, multimillionaire Chris Rock, you know, star of stage and screen. I mean, he still to this day when he's introducing new material as a comedian. He goes to those same little tiny uh, comedy clubs. You know, he tries out his material that way. It's something comedians, they just have their own way of doing things. And it, and for the most part, I feel that it works. Joan Rivers, right up until literally up two days before she died, she was still out in the, working small clubs. Now, you think this is Joan Rivers. This is a rich woman. She's a legend. She, she's successful. Why would she have to go through those little tiny comedy clubs when she can just rent out a big arena that work that way because comedians feel that they would rather test out jokes that either work or don't work on smaller crowds and then build their way up to a unto uh, a large arena or whatever even if they're even if they are highly successful so that's a comedian thing i remember i remember in an interview a couple of years ago they were trying to get Eddie Murphy to come back out and hit the scene again. And it, Eddie Murphy was like, man, I don't know. You know, it's like, I would have to go through. Yeah. So it, it was, it was pretty much the same story. So all of those comedians do feel that way. And I think Cat was just expressing that with Tiffany Haddish. Cause one of the things that he said was that, um, Tiffany Haddish pretty much has not shown the ability to tell jokes back to back for an hour. You know, and to my knowledge, I don't think Tiffany has really gone the same route as those other comedians. So I understand where people would maybe call him a hater because they because there's probably some resentment there. So and I get it, you know. So, you know, same with singers and, and these studio singers with auto tune and all this stuff. So it's kind of that thing. So on the flip side, uh Tiffany Haddish, she's very popular right now. She definitely has her own following. You know, I remember on Facebook, um uh, the earlier part of this year, I made a posting on uh, Tiffany Haddish, which I stand by, <laughs> and I got some pushback from some people that I knew, uh, and but uh, I mean I stood by it or whatever. You know, I want Tiffany Haddish to win. Um, I do feel that sometimes she plays the same character, and I want her to sort of broaden her, you know, broaden her talent, show show Hollywood that she does more than she ready, she ready. You know, what I mean, like how many times can you do that? I mean, it's just. I, it's just not funny. At least for me, it's just not funny. You can only say she ready, she ready so many times and it just gets old and stale. But she has her following. So I just want to see Tiffany definitely broaden her horizons because I know she has a talent. She's a beautiful woman. You know, I just want her to, to make sure that she's being diverse so she can stay winning and stay working in this industry and not become a one hit wonder. Because if you're not careful, Hollywood will do that to you especially if you're a black comedian. So again, I like Tiffany and I like Kat. I respect both of them and I see both sides. So that's pretty much where I am with that or whatever. God bless both of them. I just want them to win and they are winning and I want both Kat and uh, Tiffany to keep winning. And as a matter of fact, you know, Kat just won an Emmy. Now I didn't watch the Emmy Awards, so I'm not sure what he won his Emmy for, but he definitely won an Emmy. And I think 
when he saw uh, Tiffany Haddish at the Emmy Awards, that he kneeled down to her and he bat- and I think that was his way of saying, "Hey, sister, you know, I'm sorry for being so r- rough on you." But it was really good to see that pick of them making that connection. So you know, God bless both of them. Okay, speaking of Cat Williams, in other Cat Williams news, let's talk about. Cat Williams versus Wanda Smith of V103 in Atlanta. Y'all, this story is just, it's it's a mess and it's ever developing. I'm I'm hoping this is the end of it. I mean, it literally has been in the news cycle for the past week. So let me just bring all of my views up to speed. Basically, last Friday, Cat Williams um, was accompanying another comedian who was being interviewed on V103. Now, Kat was not a guest, but somehow, excuse me, somehow they convinced Kat to come on in the studio and just kind of sit and be in the atmosphere and kind of talk. And I can understand that. I mean, Kat Williams is just brilliant. The man is funny. So I can get them wanting Kat to be in there. So Kat reluctantly agreed, you know, to come into the studio. So basically, when he got there, they were interviewing the other guy, and uh, Wanda Smith, she started asking Kat questions. And I'll be honest, and I want, and I would love to hear you guys' opinion or whatever, but I really do feel that Wanda did start this. I really do feel that she was poking the bear. You know, she was asking him questions about uh, uh, <laughs> what kind of food do you, you cook for your children? And, you know, and, and Kat was just... <laughs> becoming increasingly annoyed because I guess he felt her her questions were stupid. And then he asked her, what type of food do you cook for your your kids? And it was it was a it was a weird energy and a weird interview. And she said, Well I make a nice broccoli. And oh Lord, what did she say that for? Because Kat then just started going in on her talking about how it takes nothing to make broccoli. What do you do? You can just look up your phone. It says steam, you know, steam and simmer. And it was just, you know, it just went on from there. And I mean, basically, you what you saw was two comedians going back and forth. Again, Wanda Smith, she initiated this. But they were going back and forth, but Kat was winning. Kat was just roasting the pure hell out of her. And I really feel that Wanda got mad and she got caught up in her feelings and she couldn't take it. You know, I mean, Cat was just lighting her up. He said she was big on radio. He said we both had hair, but only my hair is moving. He said her her um, <laughs> he said her her uh, wig and her headphones were both attached. I mean, he was just going. You know, being Cat, you, you look. I'm sorry, you invite Cat into the room. Cat can be unpredictable. Cat Williams, you just never know what you're going to get. But what you will get is pure comedy because Cat is just funny and crazy like that. So anyway, he was just roasting her, and she 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 lost the roasting match. So I think she really, really got deep off into her feelings, and she felt some kind of way. So fast forward to the following night, Wanda Smith, she's at the comedy club. Uh, I guess she had just finished her gig. I'm not sure. I know the video surveillance that they showed on TMZ and another network, her husband, she had told her husband and her sons, to come up there. You know, the husband had a gun. I guess he wanted to shoot Cat. Look, I don't know what this guy's problem was. You know, I just feel that Wanda Smith, she got deep off into her feelings and she went home that after that interview, got her husband all riled up. And the next thing you know, the following night, He's at the club with the gun. The son, her sons are there. She's standing there. Now, according to Wanda, uh, that following Monday, she told her co-host that her husband came up there and her sons, but Cat Williams approached her and then her, uh, her husband ran him away. Well, videotapes don't lie. And the videotape surveillance that they just released clearly shows that her husband was the aggressor. You know, Cat was walking by with his entourage. He yelled something over to Cat. And the video shows uh, him chasing after Cat and Cat running away. So, big difference. Big, big difference. Okay, so, that following Monday, she and her co-host, Frank, they were uh, felt the need to discuss it. And they really did have to address it because it, like I said, it had been 
all of the blogs and all of the news all weekend long. And, you know, so like I said, uh, she basically said that, oh, well, you know, and he was she was playing the victim, you know, and saying that Cat Williams came in with an agenda and she had all this love in her heart and she wanted to go. She didn't want to go back and forth with him and she didn't want to have that conversation. And my thing to Wanda Smith, if you didn't want to have that type of back and forth with Cat Williams, why were you talking about his clothes? Why were you talking about the fact that he had been to jail? You know, I mean, why were you making references to his sexuality, calling him a woman, saying, yes, right, girl, ooh, yeah, girl, ooh, you know, and all this kind of stuff. You know, you were clearly antagonizing the man. And you you got mad because he, he roasted you. He roasted you into the ground, and you can deal with it. And then... I, I found this part interesting. Her co-host, Frank, I forget his last name, but anyway, it's because it's the Frank and Wanda show. But anyway, her co-host, Frank, said that, I'll be honest, I didn't appreciate your husband calling up to this studio and, and, and going off on me. Again, this stems from Wanda. Why in the world, if you felt so threatened and you felt so bad, okay, why, why would you have your husband call your co-host. This is your job. This is your job. And, and 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 I want you guys to really go back and watch that video. Wanda Smith was not in any way threatened. Cat Williams did not get out of his seat. He did not cuss her out. He didn't even call her out of her. You know, he didn't raise his voice at her at all. I mean, they were just going back and forth. She, she again, she was just mad because his his roasting was better than hers, and she couldn't handle it. So, and I, it, the whole thing is just a big old mess, or whatever, you know. So, I just didn't appreciate her playing the victim. I didn't appreciate her antagonizing all of all of this drama that didn't have to be, all because she got her feelings hurt. I mean, I don't know how V one hundred three is going to handle it, or if they if they're going to say anything at all. I personally, if I was one of the high ups at that radio station, if I was her boss. Uh, I would definitely call her in, and I, would, I wouldn't fire her, but I really do feel that she needs to be uh, written up, because you have a husband that's going around with a gun that's clearly out of control, and now you now your husband listens to the show, and he's calling up here, cussing out your co-host, he's chasing people down at the comedy clubs or whatever, you're putting your co-workers in danger, all because of your husband, and I'm, and that's just not cool, you know? And the husband needs to get it together as well, because man, look, your your wife is at her job, you know. You know, it, it, any of you guys out there watching me right now, you have husbands, wives, domestic partners, or whatever. Hey, you know what? We all go to work or whatever, you know. So you're gonna have conflict at your job. Now it's different if 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 you're being uh, attacked or someone's threatening you physically or is getting crazy. Fine, I say. Call your husband up there, call your cousins and whoever else. But if it's just on some regular stuff, when you and you and a coworker or a client is going back and forth and you happen to get your feelings hurt, you need to check yourself. And uh, she was just out of line. So, yeah, that whole thing is crazy. So, like I said, it's been about a week now. So, <laughs> hopefully this is it. Hopefully this thing has died down and everybody can go back to their prospective lives and they don't have to deal with that. So, anyway. Well... That's it, guys. You know, it's, a lot has been happening this week. Again, I'm so glad to be back. I'm very excited about this season on, on Jay's World. A lot of new and great things are happening with this channel. I will be doing interviews. I'm doing more snack and restaurant reviews. I will be getting out of the studio more. Um, also, I have a cooking segment now on, on this show. That's right. I really can't wait for you guys to see that. That's right. I'm not just a pretty face. I can cook. I'm just playing. No. So a lot of things are going on right now. I, I have a sponsor, Warnology.com. I got my t-shirt for Warnology. I got this really cool watch. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I like that. I got this cool hat. Great prices. So lots going on right now with Jay's World. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to my video. Also, all of the links to warnology.com and all of my other social media will be down in the bottom in the information part. And also, guys, don't forget to hit that bell so you too can be down with the notification squad. 
and you can stay connected. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I got. I will holler at you in the next video. Bye.